we're on the cusp of the fastest, deepest, most consequential transformation of energy um, in 100 years. My work on disruption has shown that it's going to happen over the next 10, 15 years for purely economic reasons. You know, in 2010, when I said that the internal combustion engine automobile would be obsolete by 2030, many thought it was an insane prediction. Most thought that. Um, I also said that the tipping point for the electric vehicle disruption would happen around 2020 or 2021. Um, and then it would accelerate. The mainstream view was this would not happen until the 2050s or, or 60s. Um, and of course they said I was insane. Some of them are still saying that. But my numbers, um, the cost curves of batteries and electric vehicles and so on were clear on how it would happen. Um, and now of course we saw over the last year how Tesla broke through and became the most valuable um, auto company on earth. And um, we saw recently also that the CEO of VW said that yes, this disruption is gonna happen over the next decade, um, which is exactly what I said 10 years ago. And they probably wish they had paid attention to me back then. So in terms of energy, my work indicates that the convergence of solar batteries and wind is going to do the same thing to energy generation that electric vehicles are going to do to the internal combustion engine automobile. So let's look at my latest report. Rethinking energy, 100% solar, wind and batteries is just the beginning. So the question that I asked, that we asked ourselves was this, is 100% solar, wind and batteries is a system it's an electric power system that is composed only of solar, wind, and batteries possible by 2030. Um, so as background to that, um, let me show you that over the last 10 years, as most of you probably know, solar and wind both have become the cheapest sources of energy. Solar today, unsubsidized, is the cheapest source of energy period in history ever today. So this is not in the future. This is actually today. Um, not only that, the convergence of solar plus batteries, four hours of batteries, which the industry calls a nearly firm power or wind and batteries is already cheaper, not just than any other source of energy. It's cheaper than the operating costs of everything else. So. Today, it makes no sense to invest in any form of conventional generation. And on top of that, the cost curves for solar, wind, and batteries uh, basically show that they're going to get about 70% on the whole cheaper over the next um, 10 years. So the cheapest source of energy is going to get 70% cheaper. Solar went down in cost by about 82%, and we expect the next decade to see 72% uh, uh, drop in costs. Wind went down by 46% since 2010, and we expect another 43% uh, drop. Batteries went down by 87% in costs over the last 10 years, um, and we expect them to go down by another 80% over the next 10 years. So the question of whether 100% solar, wind, and batteries, what we call SWB electric power system, um, basically yielded very interesting findings. Is it possible by 2030 and how much will it be? So we took real world energy generation data, generation from solar and wind. And also we took real world demand data for several uh, markets, larger markets. India, California, Texas, New England, and so on. And we took that and we analyzed how it would grow to be 100% in those markets. The first key finding that is non-intuitive is this. There is a non-linear relationship between generation and storage. So there are thousands of possible energy systems that are along that S, uh, U curve um, that are 100% SWB, thousands. 
So it is possible. Um, and there is a nonlinear trade-off between generation and storage. So that's another key feature of disruption. This is not a one-to-one -one substitution where you take one coal mine, one coal power plant or uh, nuke or whatever, and you substitute that one with solar plus storage. Um, this is a completely new system, completely different system. Um, so there's a nonlinear trade-off. How do you choose for the least cost system? So we did that calculation uh, and this red line shows what the least cost system is um, for several regions. And what we found was because of that nonlinear trade-off is that to have 100% SWV, you can do that with anywhere from one day to four days of storage, that's it. So the idea of seasonal storage where you need weeks or maybe months of storage is not quite right because this is not a one-to-one -one substitution. Um, so only one to four days of storage are needed depending on the region. Um, but to do that, you need to build capacity for solar and wind that uh, essentially is three to five times what the demand is today. Um, so because solar is getting to be so cheap, um, you can essentially build a lot more capacity in order to have less battery storage. So like I said, we did that work for many regions. Um, and what we found was that 100% SWB, if we start 2021, and we finish it by 2030 is the cheapest possible electric power system, period. No subsidies, nothing. So if we start building a 100% SWB system today, it will be the cheapest power system. Um, and we could stop there. I mean, in the United States, it would cost about $2 trillion to fully electrify 100% SWB, which is 1% of GDP over the next 10 years. Um, but wait, there's more. Another uh, key finding is that this system, because it's designed for the lowest possible combination of wind and solar resources, um, essentially will create super abundant near zero marginal cost energy the rest of the year. Zero cost clean energy, super abundant the rest of the year. We call that superpower. Now, what does that mean? So for these regions, California, Texas, um, New England, for instance, New England has the poorest solar or wind resources in the nation. And yet, um, when you build a 100% SWB system, there are 63% of days when you will get more than twice the generation that you get today for free. This is extra power for free, super abundant, clean, uh, that's super power. In um, California and Texas, you get free super abundant power 93% of days. Another key finding um, is this, there are disproportionate returns to incremental investments in this infrastructure. So what does that mean? It means that once you have this 100% SWB system, if you invest, for instance, 20% more, um, you may get up to 300% more energy, more superpower. We have never seen, repeat, an extra 20% investment may get you 200, 300% more superpower. We have never seen this in resource-based energy the existing conventional system could never ever compete with this. Um, to think about this in another way, this looks more like information economics. It looks like um, photons plus electrons um, basically give you disproportionate positive returns. Um, and that's why it's so disruptive, which is another key finding. Superpower is it's disruptive, not just to electric power, it's disruptive to all forms of energy. So in California, for instance, when you invest in the basic 100% SWV, you get all of this additional superpower that can 
essentially power every single mile of transportation if every car a vehicle in California were electric for free. Did I say free? If you invest in another 20% increase in, in superpower, then you can cover today's electricity demand plus transportation electric, plus residential heat, plus um, um, commercial heat, plus some industrial heat for free. All of this is additional superpower. So this is disruptive to all forms of energy, assuming of course that we electrify um, cars and uh, buildings and, and so on. Um, and of course, every time in history, we've seen cheap and abundant clean energy, energy, we have seen prosperity. Superpower, 100% SWB, are the keys to a new prosperity, to developing new industries and to solving the world's most intractable issues as defined by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So let me summarize. Um, there is a nonlinear trade-off between generation and storage. It's a U-curve, clean energy U-curve. 100% SWB is not only possible by 2030, it's the cheapest possible energy system by 2040. Superpower means that not only is it the cheapest to generate 100% of what we consume today, it's gonna generate super abundant, essentially free electricity, which is disruptive to everything else. And 100% solar, wind and batteries is just the beginning because if you invest more, you're gonna get disproportionate returns on that additional energy. Thank you.